on our first trip to Paris, back when we thought that would be maybe our once in a lifetime trip to France, one of the main things we did not want to miss was the Louvre Museum. And we have a funny story about why we sort of skipped the Mona Lisa, which I'll share with you in a little bit. We got timed entry tickets to visit. Um, we did plan that way and we got in late at a 4.30 timed entry because it was an open late evening. Check your, um, check your websites for it. It is open late one or two nights a week. So we walked right in with the timed entry. We did not have to stay in that line. We didn't visit with a plan on this trip, but I did come back a second time with a plan and a map and I saw it a little more intentionally and I will link to that video here because there are about 35,000 pieces on display in this museum and like nine miles of corridors. So unless you know what you're looking for, you'll just end up wandering around and got in sort of information overload, which we kind of did. We walked around um, without much of a sense of purpose. We weren't looking for anything specific. We were just admiring the things as it came, the architecture and the Greek and Roman statues. A big part of what we were looking forward to seeing, of course, was those because I love ancient Rome and Egypt. The Egyptian things were amazing if you're into that. I, I love those things almost as much as my medieval English and French history. There is an online catalog that I would highly recommend going through if you have things that you specifically would like to see or specific time periods or collections, you can search their database and it will show you exactly what room those items are in, which wing and which floor the collection is on. So you can go right to them more or less and go in with more of a plan. So go to that online catalog, find the things that you want to see, make yourself a little walking map with the rooms that you're looking for. So you can go in intentionally and find them because there's nothing worse than leaving a terrific museum like this and realizing that you missed something that you would have loved to see. Even without any sense of direction and just doing like we did and just we just popped in and out of doors like what, what's in here? Let's check it out. And we stumbled across, you know, a bunch of Rembrandt paintings or some, you know, Winged Victory and Venus de Milo were around a corner and there they were. But um, don't skip it because it's so big. It's one of my favorite places in Paris that I've been. It's one of the coolest museums to walk through, even without a plan. You can just wander around. There's lots of places to sit. There is a cafe and an area you can hang out um, if you want to take a break and get a meal. So you don't need to leave your museum if you want to eat. If you're going, though, choose a time slot that's either very first thing in the morning or come during one of those later evening openings and get in sort of at... It's never going to be quiet in here. We thought we were going sort of at a quieter time to get in at 4.30 once the crowds thinned out. That's never going to be quiet, per se. We got in right at 4.30 and we literally just hopped up and got a coffee at one of the cafes and we sat for about an hour waiting for the people to sort of thin out. We just people watched and the masses of people that were all around until they kind of got quieter. We got our bearings a little with the map. And we didn't really get out walking until about 5.30. I think we spent about three hours walking, which is a really nice amount of time to allot to this museum. Keep in mind there are three wings here, the Denon, the Richelieu, and the Sully. There are several levels to each and all have stairs and escalators. Um, they all have very organized, well, well noted collections and specific things. So start with the wing that has mo you know, more of the things that you wanna see. And then if you have time, you can branch out into those other wings. We just kind of went from one to the next and literally we were kind of lost the whole time, but we saw a lot of things. Another thing I would not recommend doing that we did is we came and walked through the Louvre in the afternoon, quite literally at the end of the same day where we had been to the Napoleon's tomb and the military museum earlier this same day. So uh, museum overload to do both of those museums on the same on the same day, I do not recommend doing that. Save the Louvre for a day when you're feeling rested and ready to see all of these amazing things and plan to come back because you'll never see all of it in one stop. So many people come to the Louvre basically just to see the Mona Lisa and we did not get very close to her for three reasons. First of all, we have her hanging at our house so we can see her all the time. Second was the crowd. This was on a quieter evening, so there you go. And third was as we were walking along in this crowd, we saw a tour group. And in the tour group, if you're familiar with Rick Steves, we recognized Steve Smith, who's one of our main inspirations for being our own travel guides and doing France on our own. So we were able to shoulder up next to him and kind of got to chat with him for a little bit. We, we geeked out so much we didn't like get a picture with him or anything, but we were like, we have the pages from the book. And I showed him the ripped up Rick Steves guidebook and he was like, good for you, you guys are doing it right. And we were so excited to meet him. Like we were so high-fiving ourselves that we saw Steve Smith that we were like, oh, Mona Lisa. And we just left and didn't try to get a picture any closer than that. And we also got to see the Napoleon III uh, apartments, which are here. And kind of ironically, they're not 
his apartments. He lived, he uh, as emperor was at the Tuileries during the time period at the late 1800s, but this was the, I believe, the finance minister's apartment. Before it was a museum, though, the Louvre was an amazing place. It was a palace originally in 1610. An actual gladiator fight took place in the courtyard between a man and a lion. It was watched by Henry IV. Louis XIII danced in a ballet in the what is now the Salle des Cariatides in the 1620s. Louis XIV played a cameo role in a play put on here in 1664. In 1591, Charles de Guise actually had four of his opponents hung from the ceiling in the same room. The guillotine was actually here from 1792 to 93, before being moved to the Place de la Concorde for the execution of one Louis XVI. It hosted the betrothal of Mary Queen of Scots to Francois of France, and it was here that Queen Henrietta Maria of England was spending her exile, and she was here when she learned of the execution of her husband, King Charles I of England in 1649. It has housed everything from artists who were evicted by Napoleon in the First Empire. It has been a library, a mint, a royal printing house, a school, a securities exchange, and a courthouse. So much of history has happened in this amazing palace. I hope you'll be inspired to look at the history of this place as well as its incredible museum when you visit. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.